It is their history, it is their unique identity. The cave first start in Cidade Velha, here, in this place. It might have been like arriving on the moon. There were no prior population, there were no trees and no mammals. It's also that the monuments, this clustering of so many churches, the forts, it is very distinct. It's Trans-Africa, which is the importance. You have things like the earliest establishment of the hospital here um, in the early 16th century. The cathedral behind me becomes the seat of the bishopric of Africa. A lot of it is quite African-based. Come the discovery of Brazil and when the plantations take off there, that's really when the place changes. And you see enormous numbers of slaves moving through. But by the early 18th century, it sees the toll of basically pirate attacks. The main one that's talked about here is uh, the French privateer Cassard in 1712, who devastates a great deal of the town and never really rejuvenates after that. Certainly by the 19th, they're no longer maintaining the town. You get a huge amount of hill wash coming down in the annual floods that's never taken away. It's been clear from the outset here, Cape Verde now is valuing its past and wants to see it. So based on written record, this seems to be the earliest church in Cidade Vela, certainly the earliest European Christian church in the tropic. We knew that we had a church because of prior work. We knew we have a side chapel, but we have no idea of the state of preservation. What's distinct now is that you go beyond the testing phase, and in this case, you know, it's the mayor has decided he wants the church here exposed and has, has brought the resources to do that. We knew it was spectacular. It's been a fantastic afternoon because in this small site, a chapel with an altar, we are finding we still have in situ tiles sitting on the, the floor of the building. It's just wonderful to find. A outra grande importância que esse sítio em particular tem é o facto de ser a primeira estrutura religiosa em Cabo Verde e onde estão sepultados os grandes daqui, os grandes armadores daqui da Ribeira Grande de Santiago, de Cabo Verde. It's founded probably 1470. What you see here is not, is slightly later, it's probably about 1500. But probably there is an earlier phase that we can see, probably made out of wood. And where the soil here is that is the floor. To show the church, a meter of soil has to come off. The altar would be up here. Okay. What you see up there is the side chapel. That is going to be a beautiful monument because you have the tiles on the wall, you have the altar, and you're getting the tombstones. We know where there are two other tombstones here, which probably means there'll be 10. Nós não podemos fazer a história de Cabo Verde sem arqueologia. Em muitos casos vamos refazer a história. 
e, e esse, essas escavações estamos a encontrar personalidades que se falava nos livros, mas aparecia uma ficção. Perfect job of manhandling they've just done, and now we're about to reveal the original tombstone again. Sobre cá ver que eu não tinha conhecimento também e aqui também com e, e trabalho que pode ser complementar porque temos aqui por exemplo um túmulo de Fernão Fiel de Lugo foi um almoxerife foi muito importante aqui em Calver eu já tinha feito escavação arqueológica numa fazenda num, em Trindade na região da Trindade que tem ligação com Fernão Fiel de Lugo que é o senhor que está aqui no, no túmulo aqui e enterrado <laughs> that uh, for me is always is a pleasure to work with the team because I like work with them because I learn more things. I like to do that. I like archaeology. One of the most important resources from archaeological and university studies is underneath the floor, we know that the, all this is one big cemetery. And there are over a thousand people buried here. And all those people are buried before 1525. So it's only 50 years in the life of Sierra Nevada. We have done some testing. We had a little bit of testing on the bone. That kind of thing will be very, very important for the future because it shows that half the people who are buried here are African, which is an interesting issue in terms of the early history of slavery because the Portuguese would convert the slaves to Christianity, but then they're also getting Christian burial. And that is very interesting. So it's a very important resource. The existing history is based very much on written record and that doesn't cover the history of the slavery from the point of view of slaves very well. But we also discovered that it's the most difficult thing to extract. The easiest thing to learn about is the church. The one monument which has been associated with the slaves is the pillory which is down at the waterfront. It is to some extent mainly a symbol of the administrative power and it's also moved around. But that is the only thing the people have to link to their knowledge of slavery. So it is very important to bring out a more nuanced history of this place. You're dealing in the first phases of Sierra Nevada with slavery in a late medieval context. It's largely dominated by slaves and then very quickly you're getting intermarriage, so you're getting the development of a Creole society at quite an early date. And for periods, members of mixed race can hold quite high office. It's also quite important to show the potential of archaeology in Seattle. There's the sense of local communities, and they identify with the, the ruins, with the remains. You have to make a visual impression to get the action necessary to ensure its future. Para nós esses trabalhos dentro de um conceito museológico do sítio histórico da cidade velha irá exercer um papel fundamental porque atrai mais turistas, atrai mais investigadores e será um espaço uh, de sensibilização da comunidade em, em prol desse processo histórico que a cidade velha, hoje como património mundial, teve ao longo de, de cinco séculos. We found gold? A, a, not gold on the first. <laughs> <laughs> if we did, would we <laughs> tell you?
These are all marked with, uh, they had numbers and letters. Yeah. Yeah. We should photograph that, just yeah. that detail later. Do you keep that in yeah, there separate? Part. Yeah, oh, that's really nice. This is what we're doing. We're washing these things according to the context where they come from. And this is what we see that, for instance, inside this church, we have a huge amount of tiles, as expected, while outside we're getting everyday material and everyday carswares and things people would use in their homes that would not be used inside a church. We see something about the difference between how it would have been at the same time in Portugal and how it would have been out here in the colony. We now have a very rich assemblage of tiles imported from Portugal, but the most exciting finds we have had is getting a little bit of an insight into the Cape Verdean ceramics. So they have imports from different parts of West Africa, but at different points they also start to produce their own. So this is an example of a piece of pottery which is from Africa, and then we have also found another piece which are more like a local imitation of the idea of the African pottery. They also seem to burn them or fire them in a way which is we haven't quite understood yet, whether they're developing a method to deal with the kind of clay you have in this volcanic landscape. So I would really say that what we're learning about Cape Verdean African pottery is absolutely unique. Opa, estamos num, num sítio com um valor histórico, patrimonial, patrimonial incalculável, que, para além dessa igreja, temos vários outros monumentos. Estamos junto da igreja de Convento de São Francisco, que já está totalmente restaurado. Temos capelas, temos um, outros edifícios, conventos, It's been a fantastic end of excavation. We had found that we have this other room here, which is two phased. What we're seeing is a side chapel that has then been changed into a vestuary. Some of the things we're finding is not existing or referenced in any text, but certainly what exists is not at the level of detail that we're now providing. I think it's been a real sense of team effort between the Ministry of Culture and Archaeologists and ourselves and the local workmen being supplied by the camera. It really shows up, you know, the fantastic quality of the archaeology that's here and especially the sense that none of this was visible. It's all deeply buried. So it holds real promise for this future of Seattle Valley's archaeology, I think. And it just makes us look forward to coming back and finish the job. Are we ready? <laughs> so ready. Fantastic. Good. Good. Good.